Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John on Eureka Street Crypto Hub. This is my video blog, and I'm broadcasting live on Theta TV and the Theta Network. I also post on YouTube and BitChute and Odyssey. And uh, yeah, this is my uh, video blog about my crypto experience and my journey through the crypto space. I started doing this October 24th, 2020, and I've uh, been going every single morning so far since February 6th. Um, haven't missed a single morning. Getting my ass up, doing the deal, and uh, trying to find something to talk about in the crypto world. And that's not really that hard because there's always some kind of shenanigans happening in this space, no matter what. Um, so, yeah, it's been quite an experience. I think I've grown a lot um, in a lot of ways from when I started broadcasting. I, I looked back at episode one and it was just completely awkward. Um, it's what you got to kind of do sometimes in life, man. You don't got to be the pro at everything. If you want to do something, you don't have to, you know, feel like you've you know, got it down. Just get out there and try it, man. I'll make mistakes so you don't have to, you know. So don't worry about looking stupid, you know. So many people are always worried about looking stupid. I mean, you realize how many times I look stupid on this show daily? So anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't even matter. Anyway, I'm not shilling anything and I'm not sponsored by anybody. And uh, this is just my own deal. And what else? Yeah, I'm definitely not a financial advisor, and I'm not your teacher. So, um, all right, let's take a look at the uh, Coin Gecko and see what the deal is. Uh, what's going on today? Bitcoin's at thirty-five thousand. Been going sideways ever since that crash, and then it went back up to you know this mid thirty-five to forty thousand range, and it's just been kind of sitting there. Um, Ethereum is at twenty-four. Hundred and thirty-two dollars and sixty-three cents, and we got Tether still sitting there in third place with Binance Coin knocked down to three twenty-five ninety. Uh, Cardano dollar forty-seven in number five. XRP down in number six eighty-six cents. Doge Coin, how are you still there at thirty cents? Um, USDC, you know, another stable coin in the top ten now. Uh, Polka dots knocked down to twenty ninety-five. Then we got the Poser, the the. Uh, the MAN token, um, ICP and St. Clown Posse token, um, coming up here and perpetrating at $112.34. They claim that they're going to take over the internet and they're the little World Economic Forum's darling. Um, do not be fooled by this coin. Um, Uniswap, $25.35. Bitcoin Cash, $664.53. Chainlink, $27.19. Litecoin 172.21, Polygon, Matic 176. A lot of stuff is going on with this coin right now. Um, yeah, so look into it. It's pretty interesting. It's a layer two solution for Ethereum. It's because if you don't know, Ethereum is chock full of gas fees right now because of the way it's designed. It's in the process to go to Ethereum 2.0, which will alleviate that. But uh, in the meantime, and afterwards, there's all these layer two solutions like Matic and uh, a Loop Ring, and we have uh, Arbitrum that just came out, which is not based on a token. Um, so, or did that come out last night? I know it was kind of just like, yeah, supposed to come out yesterday. So I'll take a quick look at that um, uh, in a moment here. Stellar Bankers token. Uh, and let's go down here, Ethereum Classic. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, I think people buy Ethereum Classic because they think it's Ethereum um, or like, you know, the Coca-Cola Classic version. Yeah, but it hasn't. Yeah. Sorry, Ethereum Classic. Um, Solana 2837 is is a come off of its peak. Uh, knocked down in the past seven days, 26.2. But it is an interesting blockchain project that has come up um, kind of out of nowhere in a way. Uh, v chain 10 cents and theta network this is as far down as i'm going to go um six dollars and 51 cents theta network is loading up um right now they just added another enterprise validator node they have three levels of nodes enterprise validators the guardian nodes and then the edge node um, anybody and everybody can run an edge node for free on their computer um, that's how the system works and uh, you can earn t fuel by running the edge node um, you can broadcast through the edge node. I'm not broadcasting through the edge node. I have a stream key, but you can. And then, um, yeah, so um, 
And then they have the guardian node, uh, which is kind of a layer of security between the edge nodes and the enterprise nodes at the top. And then you have the enterprise nodes at the top, and you have to basically be like a large corporation and a brute and everything to be like a, 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 a an enterprise node. Um, and that would be Samsung and Google and Binance and everything like that. But uh, now you would have you would be CAA. So let's see here. Let's see if I can. I think I bookmarked it. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of news on this. Yeah, Hollywood powerhouse CAA joins um, blockchain video network Theta. So this is huge. I, did, I had no idea who CAA was. And then there was a new um, address for a validator address node, um, a validator node. I'm sorry, on, on uh, the Theta network, and you know all the the Theta gnomes. Those are the people like super into Theta, just like the uh, Chainlink Marines and the XRP Army and all that. There's the Theta gnomes. They, all the buzz was going around about what who speculating about who could this new validator network be because everybody wants their token value to go up and everything like that and they want the project to do well people were speculating that was Amazon you know people have speculated that it's Apple and all this other stuff but it turns out to be CAA top talent and sports cre uh, agency creative Artist Agency has joined Theta to help with the governance and validation of its blockchain-based video network. CAA will work alongside seven other external Theta Enterprise Validator and Governance Council members, including Google, Samsung, and Sony, as well as major private equity and cryptocurrency firms. The membership means CAA will run a validator node and ensure the robustness of the network, Theta announced in a press release. Theta sets out to enable video platform clients to earn more revenue and reduce delivery costs. Users are rewarded for sharing bandwidth to help relay a video on a peer-to-peer -peer basis. And it also has an NFT marketplace called Theta Drop. Uh, we believe that ba and Theta is the the leading marketplace for theta, uh, NFTs right now. So we believe that blockchain technology and the rise of digital NFT Collectibles will bring unprecedented opportunities to our family of storytellers, trendsetters, icons, and thought leaders um, in the entertainment industry, said Michael Yanover of CAA's head of business development. With CAA on board, over half of our validators are now run by external partners, advancing us closer to full decentralization. So they're working towards decentralization. Um, and I think, believe I spoke on this yesterday or the day before yesterday about how um, decentralized you can tell a certain blockchain is by looking at their nodes and if the nodes are run by the actual blockchain themselves or if they're run by the community or external sources. And some blockchains, even though they claim decentralization, have a lot of nodes run internally. Um, Theta, um, they, are, they have a lot of nodes you know, all over the world and a lot of them are run externally, but all the enterprise nodes, um, well, technically they're run externally by other companies such as Samsung and Google and now CAA and Sony and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how decentralized that is. I mean, they're all like huge co corporations, but uh, you know, they're not owned by Theta. So <laughs> anyway, uh, Theta's native T Fuel token has a market cap of 1.6 billion, according to CoinGecko data. So there's the T Fuel token, which is the utility token, which is the oil that keeps the entire system moving, and it's it's uh, what the content uh, providers uh, have to content delivery networks have to buy um, in order to pay the uh, edge node um, uh, people like you and me in order to be able to, so we can share our bandwidth because the problem is is content delivery networks when they're coming when they're trying to deliver their video content from centralized locations it gets choked and bottlenecked and that's why you get muddy streams or at stream outages or no streams at all and when you're watching TV why it kind of goes you know and stuff like that so um, this prevents a lot of that and it saves them tons of money on content delivery networks and I know big companies love to save money um, so uh, yeah but CAA if you don't know much about CAA this is a talent agency that has many 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 names you will know about so let's see here CAA agency it's like one of the biggest agencies in Hollywood so creative artist agency okay so let's see here um, list uh, okay list of creative 
uh, artist, <laughs> I can't speak, creative artists, art, <laughs> creative artist agency clients. Okay, so uh, you might recognize some of these names. Uh, J.J. Abrams, Jennifer Garner, Ryan Gosling. Uh, I mean, I, I don't really keep up with, you know, celebrities. Will Smith, but, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves, Sean Penn. Um, there's names in music like Pat Benatar, ACDC, uh, Miley Cyrus, Megadeth, <laughs> John Fogarty, yeah, man. Just got my paycheck on Friday. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, Ed Sheerhan, Kanye West, Stevie Wonder, uh, Radiohead, and sports. You got like David Beckham, Eli and Peyton Manning, Tony Romo, Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, like these are big names. Derek Jeter. You know, so yeah, I'm not gonna just keep on going down the list, but there's a lot of them, not just here, but in basketball and others. You know, professional sports. Now think about that and think about NFTs. What are NFTs? NFTs are basically baseball cards. You know, they are collectibles and people like, and, and top shots and stuff like that, I believe uh, will be a part of this. So hold on, uh, top shots. Hey, how you doing Randy Detre? Nice to see you. Bonne soirée pour toi. Unless you're in Canada, then you know, bonjour. Um, Let's see here. Uh, so top shots. What's NBA top shot? Everything you need to know. Um, so top shots are basically going to be these um, NFT baseball cards. And uh, um, hold on, let me send this gift over to Randy. Okay. Um, oh, Florida born in Canada. All right, cool man. Yeah. So. Maybe you're not the French-speaking Canadian or the Ontario Canada. I know they, they don't really like each other that much. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, what is NBA Top Shot? Everything you need to know about the digital asset with over $230 million in transactions. It's using blockchain technology to reinvent sports collectibles. Um, Top Shot, the newest digital asset from the NBA, is on fire. Um, NBA Top Shot has done over 230 million in transactions since its inception in October 2020, with 90% of it coming in the past month, according to token monitoring site CryptoSlam. Digital ad tests like cryptocurrencies have become more popular in recent years, and the NBA is trying to get in on the action. It's the only it's an online-only marketplace where users can buy, sell, and trade NBA highlights. These highlights are moments that are owned by users through a unique number. They're basically virtual sports cards, but instead of a picture of a player with statistics on the back, you get a video highlight of a play like LeBron James dunk or a Stephen Curry three-pointer. I don't know if you ever um, uh, collected baseball cards, but I did in middle school and stuff like that. Oh. For instance, I still have this untouched 1988 Topps baseball card complete set still in the saran wrap just right here within arm's reach. Um, and uh, 1988 didn't have any really good rookie cards that year. I mean, uh, 1987 was when a lot of them came out. But there was, in the 80s, this particular card called a Sport Flicks. And if, I don't know if you remember those, but you could just kind of move it and it kind of showed a little action shot. You know, it's kind of like the early GIF. And uh, I had one laying around. Um, I don't know where it went. I showed it on like, some video a while back, but uh, sport flicks were rad. We thought they were the best thing. This kind of reminds me of like an online sport flick. Um, so yeah, um, so that's that. But the thing is, is CAA owns <laughs> owns a lot of these sports celebrities, and Theta Network um, is basically signed on CAA as a enterprise validator. So they are bringing in baseball cards, basketball cards, movie cards, celebrity cards, and NFTs to the Theta platform. So this is something that is not small. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was kind of cool. So um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of a nice change of pace from the complete rant I went on yesterday about the World Economic Forum and all that stuff. I was all—I mean, apologize for that. I was all fired up from going to that Greater Reset Conference and you know, learning about you know how you know the cabal at the top is going to be taking over you know the world and all that, and we're basically going to be enslaved. 
Um, I tend to get fired up about that type of stuff, um, but I kind of wanted to relax a little today and just kind of like let my blood pressure kind of settle. And how you doing, Zoltan 360? Nice to see you. And it is the weekend, you know, and it's a long weekend for me, and I just kind of want to chill out this weekend, you know. The, there's a time to get fired up about the you know, new world order and all that other stuff and the World Economic Forum, and then there's a time just to chill out. And, and then we have Memorial Day as well and 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 yeah yeah so yeah so uh let's take a look over here too i was um doing some trades last night um i bought or i tried to buy more chain link in, in my transaction field i wanted to buy more chain link because of arbitrum rolling in um and uh basically the arbitrum token is is uh this there is no arbitrum token the arbitrum token is chain link <laughs> so but it, it's a way it's a layer two solution that is happening it's basically ethereum 2.0 rolling out before ethereum 2.0 and uh um it is you know according to the plan supposed to make uh transactions a lot cheaper and smoother so um but anyway uh, uses Chainlink to get this done. Hey, what's up, Atile Luno? Nice to see you, man. We're getting some good people jumping on today um, on a Saturday. I usually don't have people jump on on Saturday. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, um, so I was trying to buy some Chainlink with some dye that I had, and I, whenever I trade on DEXs, um, I normally use Uniswap, um, One Inch, or Bancor. Those are the three. Yeah, so here's Bancor Network. Um, over here, we got Uniswap. And then right here, we have One Inch. And those are the three that I generally cycle back and forth through to check the prices and see, okay, you know, this one's a little more expensive or whatever. And they all generally come out to be like the same price. But uh, I don't know. I just, I, I, I like to check. And I should probably, sometimes I'll go to Kyber Network. Um, yeah, I, I try to stay away from centralized ones, but in order to get the theta token, I always use simple swap. So, um, but uh, I was looking on from swapping die to link, and so I went to one inch, and I noticed that on one inch, one inch now has a wallet. And I was like, oh wow, okay. So how is one inch different from Uniswap and from uh, Bancor? Um, I need to do a whole video on Bancor. They got their own little thing going on. But one inch is an aggregator. It's not really a DEX. So it's a, an aggregator of DEXs. And uh, what I mean by aggregator, it basically uh, routes your transactions through tons of other different um, DEXs in order to find the cheapest path. And uh, from there, you come up with your results. So let's... Um, Launch this DAP. I'll connect my wallet. Da -da. Um, I'll choose my network. So you can choose now between Ethereum, um, the Binance Smart Chain, or the Layer 2 Polygon network. Um, I do have some Matic and a couple things up on the Polygon network, but I'm just going to stick with the Ethereum network right now. Um, so you can choose your wallet. And then normally I would have chosen my MetaMask wallet. Now you can choose your one inch wallet. So that's, that's pretty cool, man. Um, I did not know one inch had a wallet until now. Um, sure, let's go take a gander at this. Okay, uh, all right, so I have a one inch wallet and I did install it on my phone. So uh, it makes you do a passcode. The one thing I didn't like about doing my wallet was, um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm connecting to the DAP, connect. All right, so I connected with the wallet, the one inch wallet app on my phone and you can create a new wallet or you can import a wallet. Basically, I just imported my MetaMask wallet um, instead of creating a whole new wallet. I have so many wallets, I just didn't, you know, I was just like, man, this is too many wallets. Um, so I just imported a MetaMask wallet. Um, so yeah, um, the thing is, is when you set up a new wallet, it also asks you if you wanna do face ID. I don't ever do face ID on things, it's just, uh, yeah, no, man, no fingerprints, no face ID. It's pretty intrusive to me, even though it's level of security. You know, this is, yeah. I don't like giving up my biometric data, you know. Um, but, um, okay, so let's see here. We have this aggregator, and exchanges are using one inch, 
They're using Uniswap, they're using Bancor, they're using SushiSwap, they're using 0x Saki Swap. I've never even heard of that. Um, so these are ways in which they're gonna use um, to get from DAI to LINK here. And uh, let's, let's switch up this token. Let's go from LINK and let's say we wanna change over and move and trade for uh, what do I like? What do I like? Uh, man, there's so many crappy tokens. <laughs> See, that's the thing, you know, I, I, a lot of people, you know, say, oh, isn't there just a bunch of scam tokens? Isn't all this just a bunch? Well, there are a bunch of scam tokens, I know, but you just got to kind of educate yourself, and that's what I'm doing here, and the whole point of this freaking podcast, you know, just to kind of learn about this and learn what is cool and what's not cool and what's legit and what's not legit and all that stuff. <laughs> Assy token. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, let's see here. Um, I don't know. What do I want to trade my die for? Um, any suggestions? Oh, wow. Bankless is now on here. That's crazy. Uh, I thought Bankless was supposed to be valueless. Any suggestions? Um, bat token. I get that free through the browser. Um, blank token. Um, let's see what else. We could bond token. Bondly token. Oh, I like Bondly. Yeah. And the, I like the anchor token back up there. Biddle. There's two Biddles. Buildle. Build. Um, Oh, hey, how you doing, Valeri Marev? Um, the Chain Games token. I bought that when it first came out, and it didn't do much, and I sold it, and then it did something, and I was kind of, you know, and not too happy about that. Chilies. Uh, that's another NFT Sports Center token. Um, and uh, they, they, I've suggested that they need to do something with baseball cards, but they're more Euro-focused, and Europeans aren't as, you know, uh, keen on their baseball as we are um, so I don't know man I'm not really gonna do a, a transaction anyway um, Dent uh, still I just <laughs> what a donut token the dough token don't um, duck token um, Jesus Christ uh, why can't I choose um, Energy Web Token Bridged. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah, I need to... to, to Foam Token, FMX, Front, FTM, Phantom Token. Sure. I'll pick Phantom Token. Okay. And um, let's see what how many Phantoms I can get. 16, 57, 55 for that. Okay. And uh, hold on one second. Okay. Um, so, in order to get Phantom, um, I could use... it. I could let it use the one inch exchange, it's the best one. And then there's a price difference of negative 0.35 here. Uh, if I were to use Uniswap version two, Uniswap version three here, balancer, negative 6.5%, 6.17, Uniswap 10.64 and zero X protocol. And you know, this is also probably another great way to look for arbitrage opportunities too, if that's like your thing, you know, and arbitrage uh, trading, what that means is basically finding the difference in price between two tokens uh, on two different exchanges and then taking advantage of that opportunity and buying one over here and you seeing that it's a lot cheaper over there. So you go and you buy it over there and then you, you take advantage and profit off of that price difference and that arbitrage opportunity. Um, I don't have enough money to really, you know, make a huge dent in any type of some kind of arbitrage opportunity. But people have $100,000 sitting around, sure. Um, but, uh, and also that's kind of pretty high stress level. And, you know, I'm already a stressed enough dude as it is. I mean, I had shingles, you know, like <laughs> if that didn't tell you how stressed I am. So I try not to do stuff like that. Um, so let's see here. Then here also you'll notice transactions on app one inch.io are up to 42% cheaper because they're using the Chi gas token. Read more about Chi's gas token innovation. And uh, I've known this from the beginning that it uses like this Chi gas token to lower gas prices, but I never really specifically knew how. So I checked it out. Uh, what is the Chi gas token and how does it work? It's an ERC standard token, ERC 20 standard token aimed to help reduce one inch users transaction fees. If you don't know what an ERC 20 token is, it's basically a token that sits on top of the Ethereum blockchain. It's, it's a, the token of a uh, protocol that's built on top of Ethereum. Um, you have the uh, B and 
BEP20 tokens, I believe, the Binance tokens that sit on top of the Binance chains. You have the TNT20 tokens that sit on top of the Theta blockchain. So there's the sub blockchain, which is Ethereum, Binance, Theta Network, Zilliqa, or whatever. And then you have apps built on top of them or protocols built on top of them, other blockchains built on top of them, which um, uses a sub token of that Ethereum token, say for instance. So, um, you know, think of Ethereum as like Windows and then um, uh, say like Ocean Protocol would be like um, a program built on top of Windows, like uh, Adobe Photoshop built on top of Windows or whatever. Yeah, so, um, anyway, the Qi Gas token is an Ethereum is an ERC twenty standard token aimed to help reduce one inch users' transaction fees. Qi is pegged to the Ethereum gas network's gas price. Why do you need a gas token in the first place? Well, have you seen the gas prices on Ethereum lately? Actually, the past couple of days are pretty good. And uh, always, uh, I've been doing trades on like late Friday nights and late Saturday nights because most people are out doing stuff and they're not sitting at home being uh, total retards and trading cryptocurrency, but I am. Um, <laughs> so every transaction on the Ethereum network requires some gas. A gas to code token such as e Ethereum's GST2, I've never even heard of that, facilitates transactions with the same amount of work but less gas. To encourage smart contracts to erase unnecessary storage, Ethereum provides a reward for each burned element, such as a token. As a result, the process of burning a gas token smart contract erases storage filled during minting. Qi, one inch's implementation of gas token is better optimized than GST2 and therefore enables users to save more. So basically, uh, any type of uh, extra text on a um, transaction, any, any type of text you're putting on a blockchain um, costs more gas. And that's why whenever you're just trading back and forth or transferring from one wallet to another, the gas is cheaper than if you're doing some kind of like elaborate smart contract, like going on to a DeFi platform like Aave and uh, locking up your tokens on a smart contract that's going to be gaining um, interest and everything like that and then borrowing against that and, you know some kind of elaborate smart contract is going to take up more gas because it takes up more text on the block and uh, by taking up all that room on the block you're 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 running up your gas bill and um, what the Qi does is when you have Qi in your wallet at the same time, it burns a lot of that unnecessary text that is on there and uh, it, it lowers the amount of block space that that will take. How much can you save using the Qi? Um, transactions on the Ethereum network require substantial gas pushing transaction fees to $10 per transaction or more. I wish it was just $10. When was this written? Um, the burning of cheat tokens in the same transaction would reduce gas costs by almost one half. That's pretty amazing. Uh, please note that for substantially reducing your transaction costs, you need to obtain the chi, uh, obtain the Qi gas token when the gas price is at least one half of what it will be at the moment of releasing, burning the gas token. If you bought Qi at 20 Gui to profit from burning Qi, you have to burn the gas token at 40 Gui maximum, achieving a times two ratio. So I guess you just have to have it sitting in your wallet. Um, you can buy it, uh, you can mint it directly on Etherscan, you can mint Qi on one inch exchange, um, you have to go to the legacy one inch exchange. Um, okay, so and how to activate it, um, there should be a little switch on the advanced settings right there and you can activate the Qi when you do your trade. So let's do a little trade, I don't really want to buy Phantom, um, I'll just buy some Ethereum with my die here. Uh, so we'll go over here to ETH. And this will be pretty much a direct straight shot. I'll just do 50 bucks worth of that. Um, I could always buy some ETH because it's nice to have some ETH for gas. And let's look at the different ways. Um, um, oh yeah, Crypto.com's DeFi swap is now active. I forgot that Crypto.com was going to, to um, try to, to make itself decentralized. So it could, the root, the best route here is a one inch route. Um, the sushi swap route here, Saki swap over here is minus 5.5%, Uniswap version 3, um, yeah, so Kyber Network, Oasis, 0x. So alright, um, let's swap this token. You can choose down here between maximum return and lowest gas. Um, let's see where the gas is. Uh, transaction cost 789 and yeah, you don't really 
save uh, save three cents there. Lowest gas cost. Uh, doesn't really show that I'm saving anything. Anyway, uh, let's go over here to settings and let's look at advanced settings. And here's where I would activate my cheat. Ta -da! And then disable partial fill. Not really sure what that is. Comparison table. Let's look at this comparison table. Let's see what the deal is. Um, no? Okay. Oh. Oh, so yeah, this is the comparison table down here when you compare it to the other. Um, other exchanges show charts okay uh, okay all right let's turn that off and then show routing okay so it's not really this complex just to route from die to eth because it's just from a stable coin to you know just a blockchain but um and then activate chi please sign i don't have any chi in my wallet so this is not going to do anything um so i don't need to activate chi so, okay, let's take it off the advanced settings. So let's take a look and say uh, I was doing something like the uh, audio token, okay? Um, and let's go over here to settings and let's show routing. And um, one inch Uniswap version two, those are basically the only places you can get that. Um, so, but the routing here is from DAI to Tether and then from Tether to wrapped Ethereum, and then from wrapped Ethereum to audio. Um, so that's that's kind of a circuitous route. Um, so we'll take it off of that. I don't want to get audio, I want to get ETH. And um, so yeah, this is just a die to wrapped ETH to ETH. So it doesn't even go directly to ETH, it has to go to wrapped ETH first. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, uh, that's right. Um, I don't know if th this must be not the die on the, uh, um, uh, Ethereum network, the ERC20 die. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's uh, so go ahead and just swap this bad boy and send us a stealth transaction. What is a stealth transaction? This is a good question. A stealth transaction, I believe, helps to eliminate front running. Um, a stealth transaction is now available to all one inch users who want to exchange assets um, safely without worrying about potential losses from front running. What is front running? I've been over this several times, but I'll go through it again. It's basically whenever you have bots or um, traders go in and they uh, see a transaction coming through and they jump in front of it in order to um, drive the price up so your transaction ends up costing more. Then they put in a transaction right after it and they sell it and then they arbit they they uh, profit off of the price difference between the front and back transactions, and they arbitrage arbitrage trade at your expense. And I just went over arbitrage not too long ago, and it's bad and it sucks and it's a pain in the butt and for average people like you and me, and we lose money. Just like in traditional finance, running front running is an acute issue for blockchain-based decentralized exchanges. In a nutshell, front running is a phenomenon where the third party attempts to intercept a large transaction by reordering the way transactions are meant to be mined on the blockchain. A front runner steps exactly in front of a transaction in order to effort in an effort to influence the market price and profit from it, respectively. Upon signing, all transactions are broadcast to the meme pool where they remain pending until miners pick them and add them to the block. A meme pool is basically a waiting area for transactions to get onto the block. And then so this is where the miners can see what's in there and pick and choose what to put on the block. Um, this meme pool pending transaction is a great source of information about transferred values and respective gas prices. The logic of ordering transactions in a block is that the cheapest one will be picked the latest by monitoring broadcast transactions in the meme pool. A front runner can easily set the gas price higher than that of a targeted transaction and secure priority execution at his or her transaction. Uh, from now on, through the one inch exchange interface, any user can set a stealth mode, which means that it will not be seen by a third party in the meme pool as it will not be broadcast there. This feature is possible due to a direct connection between one inch and miners who provide the service as soon as the transaction is mined, it is added to the block and gets visibility by anybody. As a result, a user can be sure that his or her transaction will not get front run and will be ex executed as a, a, at a target price. Uh, the process of stealth transactions may take longer, but you can rest assured the data won't be disclosed before the transaction is added to the block. So yeah, that's good, man. And it's kind of what Secret Network does. I don't know if you're familiar with Secret Network, but Secret Network uses a trusted execution environment, which is basically a black box on your device, or it uses encryption um, to be able to keep 
the uh, the front running bots and the miners and everything to be able to see exactly what the price is, so they won't sit there and uh, you know front run you. Um, so what does it send as a self stealth transaction? I don't think I really need to worry about it right now for a fifty dollar uh, transaction. So I'm not going to do that. I want it to be quick because I'm doing this on a show. Confirm swap, uh, sign transaction in my wallet. Um, do I need to do this? Uh, I, I uh, okay, so I approve it on my phone here. I don't have any chi in my wallet, so that's not a factor. And then I'm approving on my phone. Ta da! And all right, now I can go back to my browser and I can swap the token, prepare a transaction, confirm swap. Ta da! And then now I have $50 more of Ethereum. And oh, I gotta sign the transaction here. Okay. Uh, okay, um, I can enable and no, no, I don't like notifications on my phone. Okay, um, I thought I did that. What in the hell? Boy, I tell you what, there's technology these days. These people just go on and make it all complicated and difficult. I remember the days when we were just, you know, just sign and give a handshake and some spit. Boy, I tell you what, kids these days, they gotta do all this half loot and transaction okay um, I, I don't know what the deal is I'm gonna have to oh okay no 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 okay so it says one pending up here transaction history why 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 can't I ever get anything to work whenever I'm like broadcasting <laughs> uh, confirm swamp um, sign the transaction in my wallet okay so approve Ta -da. approve Okay, so it's pending. It's going through. All right. Anyway, that being said, I think that pretty much covers the one inch. Uh, I looked at the wallet. Um, I looked at the Chi token. They do have a DAO for governance and exchange like that. You can uh, also, um, let's go back to the one inch exchange over here. This protocol is a liquidity protocol right here. And this allows you to add liquidity. And basically you're adding 50% of each different type of token and you can farm APY from that. And then, you know, you can you know, basically earn a portion, a percentage of the transaction fees of everything that happens. Um, but it is a dangerous game. I warn you. Uh, so if you are new, I would not jump into liquidity farming. Um, I believe that there are some protocols and DEXs with test nets where you can practice liquidity farming without risk of, um, of rug pulls and things like that. So I will dig around and try to find that. That would actually be a good topic for tomorrow. Um, I believe there, there are some protocols that allow you to run that stuff on test nets. Um, let me figure that out for you. Um, anyway, hey, what's up in 81? You jumping on as just as I'm jumping off. So, you know, hi and bye. So, um, all right. Well, uh, that being said, yes. Enjoy your Saturday. Um, looks like it's going to rain all day for me, but uh, you know, um, yeah. For Randy down there in Florida, um, enjoy that weather there. And maybe you are going to that Bitcoin conference. Um, if you do, then have fun there. And uh, yeah, I am just going to chill out and hang out with the kids today. All right. Well, I will talk to you guys later. Oh, you're in, eight, you're in Florida too, in 8-1? All right, man. I, I like Florida, you know? Florida is kind of the butt of a lot of jokes. But, uh, oh, Jersey here. All right, all right. Uh, I used to live in New York City for, for five years, and, you know, I did go all over New Jersey too. And, uh, yeah, so uh, Jersey's, I don't believe that, Jersey's actually a nice place, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I like New Jersey. Uh, I went down to the Jersey Shore, and, you know, the, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So don't dog on New Jersey people. Yeah. All right. <laughs> New Zealand and Zoltan 360s from New Zealand. I have no idea what time it is for you over there, but uh, I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. I, yeah. So I, I played rugby for a little bit, and um, yeah, you see the the blacks. And, yeah. yeah. I don't know. All right, man. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later.